I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright. This week, our topic is hope. And today's Setup Sunday, I'm discussing finding hope in difficult times. With so much change happening in the world, with the chaos of this third wave transition humanity is now experiencing, overwhelm and anxiety seems never ending. To get stuck in fear, we fear we cannot get through the challenges before us. We fear these overwhelming feelings will keep us depressed and all of this paralyzing our ability to see a way out. This creates a state where the ego takes over the cage mind, asking questions like, will this gray sky ever brighten? Does God really care? Now, this deep state of fear, which more people are in today than in the past 50 years, is the ego's attempt to make you fall into the low red zone energies. Fear is that mid-red zone energy, 100 fear. But as the fear builds, we begin to build up tension in the body. You see, the body holds this tension, which is a conflict not brought to resolution. And the, the body does this so the mind can remain in fear. The body supports the mind. Fear as I stated, is this mid-red zone energy. Now, the ego does not want you to move out of fear. The ego does not want you to move to the high red zone energies because if you move into anger, this might just drive behavior to release the conflict and release the tension held in the body. No, the ego is looking to drop you from the mid-red zone energy to a depressed state of energy of the low-red zone energy. In the low-red zone state, the tension held in body will manifest into disease. This is what creates those tight muscles, especially in the low back and neck area. This develops into stiff joints, which makes movement even more difficult. And eventually, this becomes chronic pain, which anchors the depressed energies of that low red zone state. And as the body holds the tension, the ego is building up the thoughts and stories in your mind of how you are a victim of life. And when this happens, we will seek distractions from this low red zone state, drugs, alcohol, food, social media, television, even relationships where we can find others who will feed our reality that this victim reality and create becoming hopeless. Your body plays a huge role in the ego's plan to control your life. And this is something many of us don't understand. The body supports the mind. But the ego uses the body in order to take over the mind in your life. So I've shared the story that in 1985, I broke my back and had multiple surgeries. This would take a year of my life away. Now, my back would become one of my ego's biggest tools to stop me from shifting out of the programmed identity that was set for me as a child. This identity of abuse, this identity of victim, this identity of a loser as a failure. My ego used my back to stop me from shifting out of this programmed identity. See, my back would go out. Now, when my back went out, this happened, when this happened, the pain, if I had to put it on a scale, would be a 10 out of 10. It would be so bad, 
I couldn't even get up off the floor. And this would result in me every single time having to shut down my life. I would have to go on massive drugs. I would have to go on corticosteroids, painkillers, muscle relaxants, and I would have to get out of life and rest in order to get better. Now, anyone listening who suffers with back issues knows this state that I've just spoke of. Yet, the last time this happened to me was about 10 years ago. It was when I was in early in my relationship with Linda. And at this very time, I was finalizing a divorce that cost me dearly. I was building the clinics and dealing with several issues that come with a new venture of this magnitude. I was dealing with my children and this life transition. I was dealing with a new relationship that brought a whole new family into my life. And then boom, my back goes out and I am bedridden. But right at that very moment that I was bedridden was when I needed to be working and functioning the most. Why now, I ask myself, why now? And then here is the truthful answer. All the things I stated that I was dealing with, the truth, I wasn't dealing with any of it. Let me explain. To deal with conflict is to bring conflict to a resolution. I wasn't dealing with conflict. I was reacting to the conflicts. The ego seized this opportunity to put overwhelm into hyperdrive in my life. My ego wanted me to sink in those low red zone energies. So I would become depressed, feel guilty, and lose hope. When that happens, the ego wins the game of life. Now, up to this point, In my life, I had never recognized the role my back and body played with my mind and in my life. Every time life became too much for me, as I really started to look at this and reflect, I realized every time life became too much, this would, this, this would, by the way, this could be either side, because I want to make sure this is clear. Life became too much and it played either side of the pendulum. It could be too much with too many problems or it could be too much success. Every single time my back would go out. And it was about 10 years ago when I would have my first of several shifts in consciousness that would alter my state forever. My back was a big one. I became conscious of my back pain. I became conscious that if my back began acting up, there was a conflict unresolved. And I slowed down. There was something I was not doing or there was something I was supposed to do or there was something I was doing that I needed to stop. And my back was telling me that story. And since then, as I get ready to turn 61 years old in the next couple of weeks, The back issues have all but disappeared. I haven't had one single episode. Now, I still have a spinal fusion. I still have what would be considered a bad back. If somebody does an MRI on my back, they're pretty amazed at the things that I do with my life, including being able to squat well over 300 pounds for repetitions without issues. But now... I might have that spinal fusion, but I have zero symptoms of having a so-called bad back. I have not been knocked down in over a decade. Now, understand this. The ego is in a battle of your conscious mind. In other words, the ego is in a battle with you to see who's going to control the life. If the ego takes conscious mind control, The ego is controlling your life and winning the battle of life. And the ego wants you to lose hope. It wants to crush you under the weighted thoughts and stories that it creates. It wants to depress your energy so you just give up and stop trying. The tension we hold in body is life unprocessed. The tension we hold in body is life we didn't fully experience. This is a conflict that we did not allow to process through. 
So the body develops tension. The longer this conflict goes unresolved, starts to build resentment and regret, the more tension the body builds. Eventually, the body develops cancer. It develops heart disease, diabetes. It develops pain, and it develops depression. And if we allow it, we will lose hope. Hope is defined as a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Now, you've heard me talk on several episodes in the past that hope is a weak energy compared to faith. And I will get deeper into that discussion and deeper into detail in this week's Connection Thursday. Hope is an expectation, a desire, a want of something to change. Hope is wishing something in your world in your environment will change. Yet, true change cannot happen outside yourself. So let's say maybe you're in debt and you hope that your friend will loan you some money. And when they loan you this money, you are relieved, even grateful. But has this truly fixed your issue? The question is, why were you in debt? Why were you in that position in the first place? See, if you could become honest with yourself, you could change anything. But you must find hope to begin this process, this shift. Because without hope, you get trapped into what's called the apathy state. Apathy energy is 50 energy. It's a part of the low red zone states. When you get into an apathy state and it becomes your habitual state, this is being locked down in those low red zone energies. If this becomes your habitual state, your body will become depressed and eventually shut down. And you'll get into a loop. You go from that 50 apathy state energy of I can't, and you jump up to 150 anger. Now, anger could be a good energy because it could propel you up into courage, into the mountain, but not when you're in an apathy state because you jump to the 150 anger and you get locked into 175 pride. This pushes your behavior to be righteous. You are mad at this or that, and it's not your fault that your life is this way. And you sit there and you're aggressive, complaining, yelling. It's not your fault. You hold resentment and you fight. And this swings back down to the 50 apathy energy where life is hopeless. And you move into from here one addiction or another to distract yourself from life. You see, that's how the ego uses the apathy state at a low red zone energy. So a lot of people right now are stuck in fear. Fear, you know you're stuck in fear if you are anxious, your anxiety, you're worried, you're in avoidance, you're procrastinating, you're stuck in a state of fear. Now that fear is the mid red zone energy. It could go up where you move into desire and anger and you start to push your way out of this. But the ego wants to take you down where you go into grief, apathy, guilt, and shame, where the ego takes control with a depressed energy. So we have to find hope. To find hope in difficult times, number one is to slow down and move into a higher state of communication. Ask yourself, how do I feel? And you want to see the ego and feel the energy. What this does is you create a separation of the eyes. It's why we name the ego. You can see the ego and that eye of identification. But who is seeing the ego? It's you. This opens up your heart, your heart in the eye of presence. That's number one. You have to slow down and see it. You have to become aware. Number two, you move into hope. Here is where you got to reach out for help. Talk to someone. Get some true support. Hear me? True support. Not feel bad for you support. This is where you get 
therapy, coaching, get into community, get into groups. The point here is you must do something. You have to move into hope. And number three, you now must begin self-compassion. This is the start of your personal development. This is you working your Green Focus Power Hour. This is you journaling, setting goals, learning to let go. And this is where you want, when you move into self-compassion, you want to create accountability partners to help you. Here you must face the conflict that is pulling you down and begin the resolution process. You can't change anything if you don't face it, if you're not aware of it. And number four, to move in hope during these times, you move into gratitude. This is entering the creation mind, the heart. Discover your purpose. Reawaken your heart. Move into your imagination. Allow yourself to dream again and move into gratitude. Gratitude is a superpower of the heart. Start a gratitude journal and start looking around you everything you're grateful for. This is going to pull you out of that fear energy. It's going to pull you out of that apathy energy. And number five, you begin sharing compassion. See, you're not going to do this alone. Nobody gets out of this alone. Part of having hope is to connect to others. It's to help others, teach others, express compassion and gratitude to others. This is what the community does. Stress Mastery Community is about sharing compassion and connect to others. It's about getting hope when the ego is creating so much overwhelm. It's about getting hope when you're in so much fear that you feel anxious and you want to avoid and you're in procrastination and you're worried. It's about getting hope. That's what the community does. Come to the event. Our event, Rise Up and Shift event, September 22nd to September 25th, is about resetting your life so you can increase your habitual state. And if you're in a low place in your life, it's about getting into hope and moving into faith, which I'll talk about. But it's during challenging times that we must connect to hope. And I ask this, and I want you to slow down and think about this. If you want a reflection of your mind, what is your body telling you? What is your body telling you? What are you feeling? What is the state of the energies telling you? And pause and ask. What is your reality, your life telling you? What is the story? Because that story is what's dictating what is happening in your life. So this week, our topic is hope. Today, we talked about finding hope in difficult times. On Monday, with the Super Millennial, David will talk on the Millennial's view on hope. This week's Health Huddles. We're going to be talking about hormones and moving from hope to knowing when it comes to your health. So I'm going to get into doing a, we're going to have a really good in-depth episode on hormones. On Wednesday's Meeting of the Minds, we will discuss finding hope. And then on Connection Thursday, I'm going to get into this hope versus faith. Because once you move into faith, you don't need hope anymore. Faith is strong knowing. Hope is wishing, but you must have hope to make to, to create this shift. Friday, we'll continue our book study, Courage is Calling by Ryan Holiday. And then we will close the week on discussing hope on Saturday with Coach Peggy. So this week, our topic is hope. And I'm hoping that you guys enjoy it. You know, so I'm, I know I have to be corny. I'm all by myself here. But I'm hoping that hope will be a, a topic this week that sets your life in a totally new direction. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. Those links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time, stay inspired.